Do you think a 10-year-old can consent to throwing away adult sexual function? Like, what do you want me to say to that? The truth? It depends on the 10-year-old. It, it depends on the 10-year-old? <laughs> depends on the person. Not oh my gosh. Not wants sex. Don't be off! What? Get the f off campus! Uh, when we're... When we're ready. When we're ready. Huge shout out to our friends over at iTarget for sponsoring this video. So I have a question for you. Let's take the example of a child who has maybe three other coexisting mental health comorbidities. Maybe this child has autism. Maybe they have depression, anxiety. Maybe they've been sexually abused. Maybe there's an eating disorder. This is the case for a lot of these kids who show up to the gender clinics. Do you think it's appropriate that we go straight away to blocking their puberty when they have these other things going on? Or to hormones as well? Because these kids are getting cross-sex hormones oftentimes on the very first appointments. And even as young as 13, it does depend on the doctor and the jurisdiction and everything, but they're giving testosterone to 13-year-old girls all over the country. Should we do that or should we be first looking into other mental health comorbidities? I'd love to see your studies on that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, would, I would love, if you can show me sure. that children all across the world are being <laughs> Absolutely. If you, I can send you whatever you would like. If you want to give me your email or you can reach out to me through Twitter. Hi, do you have any idea that recording people in a public area puts a lot of people at risk? You realize there are a lot of students here who might not want their family to be able to see They don't them. have to talk to us. You are, you are recording us in a public you're, area. In a public you're area. coming up, you're literally in if the shot. With their consent. That is the EMU, yeah. that is the union. Yeah. That is the student yeah. union. Yeah. You're also going to get people on video who do yeah. not necessarily yeah. want to be on video. I am a lot more comfortable. If you guys don't want to have a conversation on I camera or anything, we don't need to have the conversation. I am a lot more comfortable being on video because I'm already known in the community for doing stuff. There are videos That's of great. me out there. I don't particularly care. However, there are people that you are catching on video All that right. might not want to be. And they don't need to hop in our video yeah, and talk they don't, to they don't, us. They don't, no one's forced are to not talk. stopping the video with all... Have you asked every single right. one of these people here's, in here's, background? Here's the situation. Do you, do you, do you want to have a conversation Can or are you just trying to shut, the, shut down the conversation? Let me just address that. We can have a conversation so this is a public sure. space and there is no expectation of privacy in a public space. I understand that you don't like it. I understand you don't like it, but guess what? That's okay. You don't have to like so it. So you say that people who could possibly be harassed by... Who's harassing anybody? You realize people here... I'm sorry. You think that people... No one in this entire university has maybe a restraining order, has people who don't... They don't want to see... We're wasting our time talking about this right How did the conversation go... We we're having a conversation with you. How did it go to filming? Why are you taking it off of the subject? She was just talking. I don't... I don't... She? The practice today is to simply affirm a child. If a girl says she's really a boy on the inside, whatever that means, they go to these gender clinics, these children's hospitals, and they're given a drug. It's never been approved for this purpose, but it stops their bodies going into puberty. It actually stops girls from producing estrogen and boys from producing testosterone. So without those hormones, their natural secondary sex characteristics don't develop. So girls' breasts won't grow, boys' penises don't grow, girls' hips don't get wider. They're losing bone density when their bones should be getting stronger. Then they're given the opposite sex as hormones. So girls get testosterone, they grow beards, they get a deep voice. That causes vaginal and uterine atrophy, they have to get hysterectomies. These drugs and hormones combined are sterilizing kids, causing permanent, irreversible damage that they cannot undo. And I'm going to go back to this top part right here. We're talking about children here. Yeah. All right. It doesn't matter what you think. We're going to keep filming. So if you're unhappy about it, that's okay. You can be unhappy. I'm Thank just you. saying, you you want to talk about children can't consent to this, to do this. You think that we can't hey, consent okay, to... Okay, hey, yeah, no, no touching, no touching. Touch me, we can't okay. consent to transition, but we can consent to being Sorry, recorded without our... Con our consent. Our so what is your argument? We want to hear it. Well, one, children are be. Uh, so you say children cannot consent to being uh, put on puberty blockers. That's right. Yeah. Um, what are your opinions on the fact that in all of the laws uh, prohibiting children from being put on puberty blockers, there are explicitly uh, exceptions put in those laws about intersex children? Yeah. So you think that children can't be put on puberty blockers unless they're intersex? No, it's not what I'm saying. Do you want I to have mean, a nuanced conversation here? I think a lot of here? people are medically transitioning intersex children with, against their will at First birth. First of all, this has yeah, nothing to do with... No. It's a different, different conversation. Do it's I get to speak? Not, okay, no, you asked yeah, me a question. Is. Would you like an answer? Yes. This isn't about children born with disorders of sexual development. That's not why I'm here. 
Those children make up 0.018% of the population. It's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm talking about children who don't have these conditions, who have been deceived to believe that they were born in the wrong body just because they don't conform to sexist regressive stereotypes. Okay. The um, same number of people who are intersex directly matches this. This isn't about intersex. I'm not going to go well, along with these what about is a mock argument. I didn't bring it up. No, you guys, you guys she, she, she actually she brought it up. I'm not here to talk about intersex. I'm not here to engage in whataboutism. I'm here to talk about this issue. This issue isn't about intersex kids. All right, everyone. Let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor. I am talking about my good friends over at iTarget Pro. Right now, many Americans feel powerless. The economy isn't stable. Crime is plaguing communities. And those in charge just really don't seem to care. There's something empowering about knowing that you have the skills to defend yourself. And that is why I endorse iTarget Pro. This revolutionary system allows you to dry fire practice with your actual firearm anytime in the safety and privacy of your own home. You don't need to be going to the range every single time. I use iTarget when I'm practicing quick draws from a concealed carry position, and it's fantastic. You guys, this will save you a ton on practice ammo. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start your training experience. Improve muscle memory, increase reaction speed, side alignment, trigger control, and more. iTarget Pro comes in all major calibers, including 223 so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. All my viewers could get 10% off plus free shipping with the offer code Klug when you visit itargetpro.com today. Don't rely on the government to make you feel safe. Empower yourself with iTarget Pro. That's the letter itargetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code Klug. I will put links in the description below. Let's get back into the video. First of all, what does it mean for these kids to be trans? Just because they don't conform to stereotypes? Just because a girl's a tomboy, she's now an actual boy? That's totally insane. The body positive message we should be sending is that there's no right way to be a boy or a girl. What do you think about that? Do you agree? Um, I agree with that. Don't you think, or do you think, that children, kids, we should make them wait till they're adults to make the decision of going through what he just talked about? Is that that controversial of a stance? Um, I think it's controversial when you get to a point where parents want to control their kids. Like, essentially you can say like, yeah, children can't consent, but at the end of the day, a mom could say it's like, it's my child. Aren't right? they allowed to abuse their children? Some people may not see it as abuse. No, legally, right? legally. I, I mean, no. are, are legally, our are, are parents, because it's their child, they're not allowed to do anything they want with their child. Is but that correct? Have to be, we have to be honest about the reality of our life. Like, a lot of things aren't fair, right? Like, we can say, you know, it's not a legal thing to do, it's abuse, right? But at the end of the day, it's some stuff that parents do that might not be right. Right, and as a society, we do, you know, legislate, like, morality when it comes to you can't beat your child, you can't murder people, you can't do all sorts of stuff, yeah. right? But some stuff like, like this, yeah, it may be like, some parents may be like, I agree with that, and some parents may be, you know, it's my child. If parents say it's okay, and so they get yeah. puberty blockers, whatever they want, and then they decide later on that they regretted that. Is that your fear? Is that they they're gonna decide that they met like they made a mistake? So it's a good question. My my premise is that blocking puberty in children is child abuse. Parents do not have the right to abuse their children. They don't have the right to feed alcohol to their ten year olds, to start them smoking. They don't have the right to give them tattoos. But they have the right to now stop the healthy, normal, physical development of a child who can't possibly understand what they're signing up for, that's you, child abuse. What do you think about that? What do you think about what he's saying right there? I disagree personally, okay. but... And why is that? With, with it, you disagree with this? Yeah. Okay. Do you mind if I ask why you disagree with what he just said right there? I just feel like if students, or sorry, if kids in general like know inside of them that they don't conform with whatever, I feel like they should be able to um, okay. make that decision for themselves and then face, if they regret it, if they decide that it's not, I feel like they should be able to face the repercussions Can of that, do that later so, on. This is the most important thing, and I want us to slow down here. If children don't conform, is what you said, yeah. right? Beautiful. Yeah, it It's is. beautiful. What's wrong with that? Right. My position is that there is no right way to be a boy or a girl. Yeah. I am a person with an intersex condition. What is my gender according to you if gender is what is born in, what body you're born in? Well, my expression is that there are two sexes, there are zero genders, and there are infinite personalities. <laughs> yeah, and I have about that captures the entire and population. Of males. And now, I have about two hundred of them. God now, bless. You want to engage in this whataboutism. Every single child ever born with one of these disorders of sexual development is still male or female. 
That's actually That's not incorrect. True. Oh, really? Uh, yes, according to a professor According here. to a professor here. <laughs> yes. What's your opinion on the uh, professionally developed uh, gender dif dysphoria diagnosis in the DSM-5? Yeah. So what does it say? It, it is, says that gender dysphoria starts with young children. It actually. And what's are, going on today with all these adolescents? It, it, it this very condition, much does not. Have okay. you read the DSM-5? <sighs> So if you ask me a question, would you like me to give the response or would you just like to I would me like out? you to respond with correct information. Sure. So gender dysphoria is real. Traditionally, this affected one out of tens of thousands of children, not one out of tens like we see today. And it starts young. And when you look at all the academic studies... I would studies, just like to know where you're getting your studies from. Because you can I've got a whole bunch on my website if you want to go look. We can look. send them to you after the conversation. Oh, sorry, you can't cite yourself as an academic It's not myself. There are academic studies on my website. Okay. They're from PubMed or what wherever. What academic studies? Go look. It's billboardchris.com. I don't want to go to your website. And I do want to say, just on the subject of, you know, do parents have the right to abuse their children? And certain people will look at this in different ways. But we have medical authorities in now in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and England who have conducted systematic reviews of all of the evidence. Not politicians, mm. these are the medical boards. And they found there is no evidence to support transitioning children. There's no evidence that it is improving their psychology or their happiness. It's really just causing irreversible harm. Right. So I know there's a debate about whether this is child abuse or not. I'm very confident in 10 years time, we will all look back at this and say, what the heck were we doing to kids? Mm -hmm. Sterilizing children. They couldn't possibly understand what they're signing up for. So I firmly do believe that this is child abuse. And I do believe eventually even the medical bodies in America, which are pretty ideologically captured at the moment, that they'll do away with this. Hey, do not hit people's gear. What are, what are you doing? You, you're wearing a sign that says don't engage as you smack As you camera. engage. Are you serious? Do we need to call? Do I need to campus? Do I need to go? Do I need to call campus police? No. Okay, take your bike I'm and get leaving. out of here. Yeah. There you, you go. need to get out of here. Off. What? Get the off campus. Uh, when we're when we're ready. When we're ready. So, how do you feel about this subject? I feel like in 50 years from now, we're going to be looking back on it like we do in the box. Yeah, man. Totally agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I'm a high school student. I'm just visiting today. But awesome. I mean, God bless you. This is amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. What makes it right for a law to say that certain children are forced to transition because the society doesn't like how they were born? But no one's forcing anyone to transition. I was forced onto hormones at, at age 12. Nice try. That is an extremely common thing that happens to intersex. So what's the name of your DSD? Why uh, do you think you have any right yeah, to know you Well, she's talking about this. My she's making this a subject of the conversation. Okay. NCAH, also known as non-classical congenital hyper, adrenal hyperplasia. Okay. So... It, it's a disorder of sexual development. It is one that does not appear at birth. However, it is recognized as an intersex condition. It is akin to congenital <laughs> adrenal hypoplasia, which is a normal intersex condition. It appears in infants okay. with XX chromosomes and gives them ambiguous genitalia and hyperandrogenism. I got you. And it actually affects um, up to, what, 5% of the traditionally female population. So it impacted your estrogen production? Yes. Production? So they gave you estrogen? Yes. Right. Without my consent. Okay, but you're you are female though, so they gave you estrogen. No. Well, you are. You're XX. No, you're female. You don't know that. If you as little girl were a tomboy, which half of women were, if you wanted to climb trees and play in the dirt and throw or on a football okay. and play with the boys, you're a beautiful girl. But this whole ideology, the flaw with this entire ideology, from the outset, is that it teaches that it's things like the toys you play with that are a determining factor in your gender. And it's not just me saying this. I've got the doctor of the most prestigious gender clinic at the top-ranked children's hospital in the country, Boston Children's Hospital. Her name's Dr. Jeremy Carswell. She's on video talking about how it's things like a little girl trying to pee standing up, a little boy who doesn't want to get a haircut, playing with the opposite gender toys, or trying on a sibling's clothing. These are a sign your child is transgender. What the heck do toys 
have to we, do we, with your gender? We had a woman that's yesterday. That's so regressive and sexist and ridiculous. I just want to point out one thing that's really important in this conversation is the first word in the billboard. Yeah. 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 He's not telling people who are consenting adult to 18 year old. He's we're strict. He's strictly talking about children. Yeah. And nonconformity <laughs> does not require a chemical castration drug. My very good friend is someone who who has uh, com uh, what is it? Complete androgenal insensitive syndrome. Right. Uh, was born with female with female genitalia. Was born um, ha produces estrogen levels akin to that of women has XY chromosomes. I'm, I'm still, so, maybe I'm, I'm not tracking the conversation. So this, this I'm, I'm, we got a little bit off. I'm trying yeah. to figure, uh, this, this is a, this is a common tactic back. trying to change the subject no. from the children who don't have exist. disorders of sexual development to intersex no, conditions. No, it's called. Because the they can't actually that, discuss this subject okay, so, at hand, so let's, they have to can change we, the Is it possible to talk about this as, a, as opposed yes, to something because else? Do you know why puberty blockers exist? Yeah, I do. Why did they? Why were they made? They were made to treat prostate cancer and then endometriosis and uterine fibroids in women. They've also been given to sex offenders to chemically castrate them, but they've never been approved for this purpose. That is I untrue. Mean, a lot of things. Uh, of course, I'm, it's I'm, not. I'm, uh, really quick, like what is the truth? Can, can, uh, really quick, could, could you tell well, us the truth well, on it? Well, that is a a, a reason that pu uh, puberty blockers were made. Puberty blockers are regularly used in in conditions in which children develop early puberty. So when people Yeah, talk they've been given to kids for precocious puberty. Yes. So precocious puberty is a condition where girls under the age of 8, boys under the age of 9 are entering into puberty. Again, this and is you a know what why again, those this is what aboutism. This has nothing to do with what I'm talking about but here. If you're, I'm not if, talking about but kids. If children can't consent to puberty if you blockers, could please stop why cutting me they? off, that would be wonderful. That's how, how we engage in a Skipping proper conversation. puberty and delaying puberty would be much different. I don't see how a child can cannot consent to puberty no, blockers. Totally Do you think children can consent to sterilization? Yes. Okay. Okay. You're consistent. Do you think children can consent to throwing away their adult sexual function? Yes. At, well, at what age do you define children? If you are a child, no child under the age of 12 or 13 is going to be Put, is going to be put on puberty. Of course blockers. they are. The most, the of course most they a child that I would like to see your source. You've done no research at all. Do you know when they give these? At ten or stage two. Do you know what ten or stage two is? Do you know what? Do you know what ten or stage two is? Yes. What is it? It's when it's the second stage of sexual development. And what age are these children? That depends. Nine, entirely. ten, eleven. That's for girls, this is when their breasts have first started to form. It's about two years before they've had their period. So for them, they're going to be like nine or ten years old. For boys, they're going to be about a year later. And the whole point of giving these kids these puberty blockers is so they don't enter into puberty because that would be too traumatic. If I were to steel man your argument, it would be, well, we must give kids puberty blockers at the earliest possible opportunity. Otherwise, they would start to appear more like their sex. And then they won't pass as well when they're an adult. And this would be traumatic for them. Okay. So they give these to kids at ten or stage two. So that is nine or ten or eleven years old. You think that's old. too young? Yeah, I mean, they still no. believe in Santa Claus at that age. You think that's totally fine for them to make that decision? So a as second a child? ago, it wasn't happening. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> a second ago, it wasn't happening that they were giving these to ten-year-olds. Ten seconds later, it is. it is happening and it's good. Yeah. Is that I, your position? I don't agree. You said a hypothetical, and that it's not a hypothetical. According to me, if everyone was given that, and okay. You were denying that that was happening, though. It Why was that? It isn't happening. You're putting words in my mouth. I can show you a video right now from the president of WPATH where he talks about all the boys who were given puberty blockers at Tanner Stage 2. If it were happening, would that be a bad thing? I've never had an orgasm as an adult. Yeah, if it were happening, would that be bad? That entirely depends on the context in which it's I happening. Mean, <laughs> are orgasms a medically necessary thing? Like, do we need them to happen? Oh, so you think well, a 10-year-old can consent to not having any adult sexual function? Yeah, we'll back up a little. You think a 10-year-old can consent to throwing away adult sexual function? What do you want me to say to that? The truth? It depends on the 10-year-old. It, it depends. depends on the 10-year-old? <laughs> depends on the person. Not oh my gosh. Wants sex. But there's another issue here. This isn't one out of 10 or 20 or 30,000 anymore. It's 300,000 kids in the United States have been diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Those are official diagnoses for like insurance purposes. This has exploded. We've seen in the last 10 years approximately a 4,000% increase or 40 times in the amount of kids who didn't have gender dysphoria growing up, but get into adolescence and now have it. Is we it call this rapid onset. Is it awareness about the issue? So we call this rapid onset gender dysphoria, and today it's primarily affecting girls, not boys. 
And there's Girls one article I would love you to read. Masculine people. So there's one article I would love you to read. It's by Jamie Reed, R E E D, and she was the case manager at the Washington University Transgender Clinic for the last four years. She wrote for the Free Press and she submitted an affidavit to the Attorney General of Missouri. This is a woman who calls herself a queer woman. She says she's politically left of Bernie Sanders and she's married to a trans man. So this is not some conservative. This is a woman who went there to help trans kids. She wrote this scathing report where almost all of these kids, she admits, have other mental health comorbidities going on. Some of them are coming straight from the psychiatric unit. A lot of them have suffered abuse, sexual abuse or trauma, and they don't get treated for any of this. They just get affirmed only, and on their very first appointment, they're getting puberty blockers across sex hormones. Wait, I'm kind of confused. Sorry, I'm like kind of lost right now. It's okay, it's okay. That's all right. It's complicated. What, 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 all I'm really saying is, a lot of the times these kids have other things going on. Right. They're struggling. Do you remember being 10 years old? No, I do. Because of your trauma. Because of people like I do. Yeah. I remember being 10. I was old enough to know a lot about real world problems. You know why? Why? The first time I tried to kill myself, I was 10 years old. The first time I got to sent to treatment, I was 10 years old. The second time I got sent to treatment, I was 15. I was in treatment for two years. Actually, about like four years of my life were spent in treatment, in and out of treatment facilities. I have a question for you, actually. If sure. a child needed Sorry. an emergent Sorry. appendectomy, <laughs> and you... See, this is, and, all they have is whataboutism. And you... Do you know what a logical fallacy is? Can you please do. Do you, stop what is a logical interrupting fallacy? me? What is a logical fallacy? Oh my God. You are talking I first. I am talking. I am it's literally talking. It's a total waste talking. of time. Oh you God. want to make this about appendicitis now. But you rely on a medical professional That's a to medical make... condition. Oh is my God. Is and puberty a medical is condition? So and gender dysphoria? Is puberty a medical condition? Yes. Natural puberty yes. is a medical yes, condition. Yes, it is. Because it is a medical process. So puberty is, is a medical story. process. Yes, it is. How so? Because it relies on chemicals to help Is breathing child. a medical process? Yes. Is your heart beating a medical process? Yes! I think they so mean, everything's oh, no, a medical no, 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 process. No. I think what you mean is a biological process. And what field of study does medicine no, no, no. take place so in? Are you using the word, are you <laughs> like, using the oh word biology God. as a synonym for the word medicine? Do you guys have this one, by the way? This is about yeah. making yeah. lifelong yeah. decisions yeah. to alter your body, to sterilize yourself, to throw away your future adult sexual function. And we expect 10, 11, and 12 year olds to be able to make this decision. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a it's a very hard conversation for sure. Yeah. Like, well, thank, in, in thank you for being here and yeah, having it. You, by the thank way, you. do you think that there's a, a prescribed opinion or a narrative or a set of opinions that that you feel either from your faculty or fellow students in administration that you should have? Uh, no, not. I feel like faculty, especially. I think because one of my English teachers, she's very like into stuff like this that that talks about. Um, <laughs> You know, essentially stuff that in the future we really have to sit down and think like, is this a good thing for, you know, our future, you know, our future kids and stuff like that. So it's a situation where everybody has their own opinion. Um, it's not something where we have to have an argument about it. Yeah, there's a proposed narrative along faculty and, you know, as far as, you know, it pertains to this. I know it's not an exact question, but you just said, you know, is there a kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. So and, yeah, there is. There what is, is. Thank you for saying. What is that now? And, and I actually want to. I actually want to jump in really quick. I think one indication of that that there is a an approved narrative on campus is the fact that people can walk by, protest, laugh, stuff like that. But every single person that's been in support has been quiet, walked by, agreed, yeah. left. Oh yeah. That's so, and said I don't want to be on camera. And said so. I don't want to be on camera. So yeah. back to Peter's question, what is the narrative? Yeah. Well. Just for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm a PR major, which is public relations. It's a lot like marketing, and I have to take a gender studies course. And it's you know it's all about these you issues. Take a gender studies yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. So you have to take a, a course on leftist ideology. Uh, 100%. Are they selling it as fact? Or are they selling it <laughs> they're as selling ideology? It, they're, they're selling it as fact. And, okay. Yeah, they're selling it well, as fact. And it has nothing to do with marketing. A little louder. So you're studying PR. Yeah. You have to take gender studies. Absolutely have to take it. And you know what? It, of course, like you should respect people and do, but I don't know why I have to spend all these hours each week in this course. Some of some of the stuff is okay, like all right, interesting. Some of the stuff is is out there, you know, it's it's outlandish. What they're teaching you, are they saying that it's fact? This is really the only way to engage if you really Yes. Want <laughs> you know, I am a PR major, and it has absolutely nothing to right. do with PR. You know, I, I get being respectful <laughs> and you know learning about. But, it's, it's 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 out there. Are you hearing what he's saying? Yes. And, and do you do you agree with him? Um, 
I mean, it's it's essentially what I said. Like everybody has their own opinion and kind of lays it on you as like a little bit different than what you said, though, well, because he's I mean, saying I mean, there's more uh, systemic approved narrative on yeah. campus. Would well, you do you see that or no? I would say in my like field, no, because there's no room for it. Like, but so he interfaces with the public as right. part of his. Yeah, right? right. Is that right. correct? So, I don't yeah, put words correct. in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, it's, it's a lot like marketing, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm in this class now. It's, it's at 8 a.m. So. It's, it's a hard way to start the morning. <laughs> what if your child is telling you, like, I like really, really, really want this for myself, like deeply, and it's not something that's like it's. It, I I feel like comparing so, it to alcohol or question. drugs or it's something that question. is yeah. different because no, it's a great question. it doesn't yeah. like. Mm -hmm. It's not as dangerous if you do it with the right doctors and the right people, and you can you can do it safely. And so and so. so let me address that. Wait. So, like. Once they do that and they become super happy and they feel like that's what they want, I, it doesn't really affect. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It doesn't really affect like anyone else, really, besides them. We have studies, academic studies, into gender dysphoria going back decades. So gender dysphoria is this condition. It's this intense loathing of your biological sex. Historically, it affected boys much more than girls. One out of tens of thousands, depending on the time period, maybe one out of thirty thousand. And all the academic studies point to the exact same results. <laughs> which is that more than 80% of the time, these children with severe gender dysphoria from a very young age that persisted into adolescence, that when they went through puberty, it desisted. They grew out of it. Well, what percentage is that? The most recent study, and one of the most thorough ones, followed 139 boys from the age of like 5 all the way into their 20s. 87.8% .8 of them grew out of it. 63.6% .6 grew up to be gay. Okay, so what about the ones that didn't grow out of it? That's a good question. So, we got to yeah, we got a, a good one. Yeah, as an adult, this is a different conversation. If they want to do something to their body as an adult, I wish them all the best. Okay. But good. when ninety percent of kids are going to grow out of it, we're 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 going to now sterilize these kids. You look like a. Why do you okay. want to mutilate and sterilize kids? So you, oh, I don't. I'm saying you look. No. Like do you have an argument for this? No. No, you have nothing intelligent. No, to say. I just, no, I don't. So right. why why are you insulting him then? Because he just looks like a. You just do that to random people? Yeah, sometimes. Even if you agree with them, maybe? Oh, I don't agree with that. What is your evidence for your position? I didn't take a position. Well, you just said you didn't agree with it. You, you, no, you, I said I... You just took you a position. You literally yeah, said... I, okay, you're right. I did. I don't agree with that. Okay. Not a, in relation to him looking like Okay, well... You what, think we what, should sterilize kids. What, what is it that no. you disagree well, with about this? Well, that's what these are doing. I don't want to get into that. Right now, just but that's, because that's I, you don't want to have a discussion on this subject because you know absolutely nothing about yes. it. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So then you go to insults because that's what you've been you taught here evidence. on campus. Do you have any no. evidence for no, the no, position? No, 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 not on campus. No. Jeez. That's rough. I don't even have parents, bro. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Always this trigger word, safe. Stay safe, as though there's something inherently violent about words. Cheese. All right, everyone, that is it for today. So we had a handful of interesting conversations. Let me know what you guys thought about these conversations down in the comment section below. Gentlemen, we'll go Chris first. What did you think about today? Outstanding. We had so many great conversations, and we've started a thousand more conversations. So exactly. that's the best part of the day, and it was pretty peaceful. Yeah, yeah. Peter, what do you think? Uh, Chris summed it up absolutely perfectly. I think that the people who came out to protest, I, I encouraged that behavior. It was great. We had a lot of people with sincere questions who yeah. came. Yeah. And I think Chris is, again, absolutely correct that this kind of whatever it is that you call what we're doing, it raising consciousness is going to start more questions and then and then the whole spiral of, hey, well, why is that the case? Absolutely. Can children consent to puberty blockers? We're creating a thousand more conversations. Right. You guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button so you're notified. Next to my post, wait really quick. Chris, where can people find you on social media? At Billboard Chris on Instagram and Twitter is where I do everything. Awesome. And Peter? At Peter Bogosian, P E T E R B O G H O S I N. Thanks. But you think it's fine to stop other boys from going through puberty? You think they should grow up to have a micro penis for life? I, well, I think having a micro penis, that's some people's issue. That well, that's what happens when you put have. kids on puberty blockers. Did you know that? Uh, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I'm, I don't. What do you think? I'm not taking anybody's word on anything. So you know nothing right about here. this, right? No, no. That's what I'm saying. You know absolutely nothing. That's what I'm saying. This sign has nothing to do with me coming over and calling you.
Okay, you just you said, said you disagree you, with you the science. Yes, yes. With it. I do disagree with it. So, yeah, so tell us why. Have a backed up position on it, which I can't give you right now. Okay, so then you just why not why not just say I don't know so, rather than yeah. saying I disagree. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's okay. fair that's, enough. That's because totally reasonable. That's a totally reasonable position. Yes, yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just saying you being out here with these signs doing this is making you look like a. Okay. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Cool. All right. All right. Well, have a great one. Enjoy yourself. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks for saying hello. Hey, you guys, enjoy you. yourselves. Have a great day. Thanks uh, for field saying trip. hello. Thank you. Have a great field trip. Thank you for saying hello. Hey, guys, awesome. I got to give you a quick message. I'm so sorry. No, we're not. Uh, my students need to go. Oh. It's always the adults who want to censor things, yeah, it's right? It's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. That's okay. You, at least your kids know what biological reality is. She was not happy. She was <laughs> Say, not stop, happy. Stop freeing their minds. Honestly, mind. Peter, yeah. I said this the other day. It's going to take the children to lead a lot of the adults out of this. Yeah, yeah big time. I, mean, I, know, I know we mentioned social media before, but a lot of it is also those adults, adults. This says it wrong. So adults I, I, keeping these children down, I, I keeping these children down I and think, pushing their ideology on yeah. them. I think this is great with them all that time. I think this was a democracy. Absolutely. I think that everybody is entitled to hold any sign that they want. Absolutely. You know what, the counter-protesters, they are, they're telling us that we're loved. Actually, these are the nicest counter-protesters ever, if I'm being honest. I, yeah, I get appreciate um, that. Thank I do you. appreciate that. Thank I you. appreciate that too. Thank you. Thank you. Since thank my you parents that. died, almost um, no one tells me that except my dogs. Oh so my thank gosh. You. Getting, Peter's getting dark over here. <laughs>